So seriously, though, do you guys actually think that uh, Lois is not Lois and Jimmy don't count as sidekicks? No. I think Jimmy definitely no. used to count as a sidekick. He used to be, and that was during that whole that was during that Silver Age time when stories were a lot less. At and least, you get a sidekick, and you get a sidekick. They were a lot less narratively complex. They were yeah. complex, perhaps for no good reason, but they weren't like narratively complex. So you get stories about Superman having to go into space to save Jimmy from some kind of alien who kidnaps him or something like that, and then he tells Jimmy why he was stupid and got himself caught. That's <laughs> That's a typical Jimmy Superman story. And... That, that's one of the reasons I think why Jimmy has not stayed a sidekick is just because people don't care to see that anymore. <laughs> don't care to see just an idiot making Superman have to do crap all the time because Superman's got bigger things to deal with, like Brainiac and... Anti-Monitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's, there's kind of two types of death of sidekick, I guess, then, if you think of it that way, there's sort of literal death and figurative death. Um, you know, obviously, figurative death being, like, the, their role changes in such a way that they are now supporting cast, or just maybe they just break off and go off to do their own thing, the Nightwing type thing. Maybe coming back for a brief stint to say hello, but um, well, I guess what was, what is kind of, like, one of the more pertinent deaths of, uh, of a sidekick, Bucky notwithstanding, um, that you guys really, um, like Jason Todd, or like what? What do you think is sort of uh, an important death of a sidekick? I would have to say that I mean the Batman death of sidekicks is the like penultimate death of sidekicks. Um, because it's so have... frequent, or because it's so good? You because the death of sidekicks. What? Sorry. You mean quintessential? <laughs> quintessential? Sure, we'll use the word quintessential. I tried to use a big word. Penultimate means next to last. Oh. <laughs> um, I Let's did not know that. <laughs> okay. Cut. I think that the quintessential death of sidekicks would be the Robins. And I'll start with Jason Todd. That was one of the most probably memorable and gruesome deaths of a sidekick that has happened to date. Bucky's death in the Marvel comic side was essentially just a you know a fadeaway of a character, um, but Jason Todd was brutalized uh, by the Joker. Uh, he was beaten by a crowbar. Um, like it just it was unbelievable for its time. And then Damien, Damien was, it was kind of like the, his swan song, because he pretty much, like, sacrificed himself, and, like, that was a very uncharacteristic, I'd say, for Damien in his whole personality. Um, and, and other sidekick deaths that you have weren't necessarily anything special and you know I could make a list and read them off but people probably wouldn't remember who they were or unless you're a super comic geek you'd still just be like they were just like pretty much nobodies That's I actually what... tend to believe I tend to believe that the people listening to this podcast are probably pretty comic book geeks I believe that too but pretty uh, pretty sure actually let's go let's go to my list um, no no let's not go to your list Kyle uh, what do you? What do you? I don't know. I just felt like interrupting you for no good reason. Kyle, what do you think? <laughs> the, the death. I think the death is a good, a good story moment. But I don't know that it's necessarily from a writer's perspective. You know, it, it's a good way to give, you know, the hero something to kind of regret and kind of brood about. Especially, you know, Batman. Is, you know, the brooding. You know, for years over Jason's death. You know, it's a good. It's a good way for a writer to give that character something to do. But I think it's right, also he had nothing to brood about before that. Nothing. Well, <laughs> true. But I, I think it's kind of a lazy, a lazy way out to just to kill the the sidekick just to give the hero more you know, motivation or or grief or some emotional, you know, response. I think you know they could they could do something else with those characters, you know, besides just killing them. That's one of the reasons why I like Damien's death compared to like anyone else's death, because his actually is part of 
a story arc and it builds and you see him like changing and then he dies and you're like, ah, oh, I actually cared. But typically they end up dying in sort of one-off stories. Like from the very beginning, Damien was going to die. And in like Jason Todd's case, he was either going to die or not going to die depending on when you called or whether you called in. And that's, uh, well, not us because we're not quite old enough, but you know what I mean? It wasn't a, it was a planned death, but it wasn't like a, it didn't have a, a character arc. It was just like, this character is getting kind of annoying and we don't like him, so let's give the, the audience the choice to see this sidekick dead. And they chose to see that sidekick dead, and so that's how that story ended. But there were two endings written, so it's it doesn't feel as genuine. I think that's my point. And and in the end, somehow that the fact that we all voted for him to die so has so. ramifications in Batman's life for the next ten years as he whines about it, forever's and ever's and ever's is is. <laughs> All right, so we actually have spent a great deal of time talking about male, with the exception of Lois, but what about female sidekicks, either women that have sidekicks or women who are sidekicks? What's your favorite? Harley Quinn. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. Yeah, she's, like, probably one of the best female sidekicks out there, only because the dynamic between her and Mr. J plays off so very well, and uh, she is, like, crazy under her own, and... Plus, like, who doesn't love that outfit that she wears? So, um... You know what, actually, I'm really really liking about Harley right now is her, her dynamic with Poison Ivy, actually. Uh, we should totally do an episode on yeah. team-ups. Team-ups. Oh, I was going to say, we should just do an entire episode on Harley Quinn. <laughs> you know what? Done. I'm sold. I'm sold. Didn't take much. But, yeah, no. That, her dynamic is pretty uh, flavorful, no matter who she interacts with. But um, I think uh, her and Poison Ivy are... are a really good pairing too, kind of like a, a the straight man and the you know crooked arrow. But anyway, um, yeah. So Kyle, do you have a, a favorite female, or would you say Harley Quinn as well? No, I think probably uh, Wonder Girl would be my favorite, or maybe uh, I guess it's a reverse of the sidekick, uh, but Star Girl. Okay. Star Girl. Uh, no. I thought someone would weigh in here, but uh, and with Star Girl, uh, the the super or superhero sidekick dynamic is kind of flipped around. Uh, Star Girl is the hero, and her stepdad uh, Pat Dugan uh, kind of puts on a, a metal robotic suit to kind of safeguard her and becomes her her sidekick. So you have a teenage superhero with an adult sidekick, uh, which isn't the first. Actually, her dad was a uh, a sidekick in the 40s to another kid superhero uh, as the Star Spangled Kid in Strikesy. So you kind of have this backwards adult sidekick with a teenage superhero dynamic going on. Who writes that? That uh, Jeff was, Jones. Yeah, that was Jeff Jones. Jeff Jones. Yeah. Uh, that is an interesting dynamic, actually. I like it. I mean, it seems on its face, it seems like someone just literally tried to create a inverted sidekick scenario, but. Um, I haven't, I haven't actually read it, so it could, could be quite good if it's Jeff Johns. No, probably not bad. Um, what else haven't we talked about? We've talked about uh, just villains having sidekicks or henchpersons Zzz, in general. You want to know the best henchperson? Ah. Bob. Okay. What do you think? Of, what's about, What about Bob? For those who don't know, Bob is the Hydra henchman that Deadpool convinces to help him... Uh, save Agent X or rescue Agent X from a Hydra facility and later becomes Deadpool's uh, sidekick. And it was a really interesting dynamic because Bob was actually um, not... He was coerced into joining Hydra by his uh, girlfriend at the time. And Bob really didn't like being in Hydra. I mean, one of the most famous things that he ever said was that he, he liked AIM because they had a better dental plan. Um... <laughs> But he ends up becoming Deadpool's sidekick and uh, tags along with him. And uh, one of the probably the best moments that the two of them have was when uh, Wolverine actually cuts Deadpool's head off 
and Bob is the one that has to sew the head of Deadpool back onto his body so his healing power uh, would kick back in and uh, thus heal him. So uh, henchman slash uh, sidekick, number one, Bob. Solid. It's a good choice. It's a good when choice. I think of a bad... I, I don't want to say Catwoman is a bad guy because that's a bit contentious, but Catwoman had, speaking of female sidekicks, she used to have Holly Robinson, who was a strange case because she was in year one and then got killed and then came back by accident because somebody forgot she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and But then at some point she takes over the role of Catwoman and just without telling her and then uh, just for a brief period in the 2000s and that was kind of an interesting dynamic of seeing Catwoman having someone to talk to and then having Catwoman be out of the picture and have Holly take her place and I don't know but I mean at that time Catwoman was kind of a good guy so it doesn't really count as a bad guy case but I think we're missing two really important ones. One Talon. being Robin. No, we Robin haven't talked about Robin guy? at all. <laughs> no, but female Robin. Yeah, yeah. Frank Miller's Dark Knight. Pretty big, important, like, Robin, if you think about it, in the history of comics. Like, that storyline was amazing. I mean, it's been used multiple times for different mediums. Um, they admit that they use part of it for... Uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight uh, Rises. So, like, I'd say that's pretty good. And then, along the same line, Squire. Yeah, Squire and Carrie Kelly, and there's also uh, Stephanie Brown was Robin for a brief period and then got fake killed. I think Carrie Kelly's a good example of a sassy sidekick who holds her own in ways that you, like, ways that sort of defy the stereotypes that you would imagine. She's kind of girl powery, which is before its time, like, because that was only the mid-early 80s, so, and I'm associating girl power with the Spice Girls, so <laughs> they came later. <laughs> well, then you also got Oracle. I wouldn't necessarily say she was a sidekick, but she did, does really play the sidekick role in certain situations, uh, whether it's alongside Batman or alongside Dick. Um, so, like, I'd, I'd say she's more of a sidekick than Jimmy and Lois are, but not so much a sidekick as she's, like, really independent. I don't know if I'd call her... That's a lot of value. So, go ahead. What would you say, Rob? I, I think she's more like a... I think she's the leader of that team. Like yeah. as she's written in the in the book, she is the leader of the Birds of Prey, regardless of who's out on the field, because the book is really about her more most of the time, even though she's just hanging out in her room with a bunch of green caption boxes. But but she's the leader of that team, I think. Uh, but even the Birds of Prey had like a sidekick in the form of. Uh, what's her name? Misfit. Misfit. Yeah. Wh whose catchphrase was Dark Vengeance, and she's got a huge following, and she's only, like, she didn't have a lot of appearances, but she's uh, got quite a lot of fame just for being, hanging out with the Birds of Prey and not having any powers, except maybe I think she... That's, I think that's a good example of, like, sidekicks growing so much in popularity that there are characters and, and people in real life that just want to be the sidekick to somebody because it's the it's the cool thing to do. You get to hang out with the hero and you get to, you know, go on adventures where, you know, when the sidekick started, it was, you know, like Batman's like, oh, your parents died? Well, I've got a job for you. <laughs> and now it's like people are like, hey, like, sign me up for this for this job. And like, like, let's go kick some butt and let's go do some dark vengeance. Well, it's funny that, like, uh, like Dick Grayson was kind of recruited by Batman, and so was Jason Todd, because they were both, like, errant kids who needed to be taken care of in some way. But then you get Tim Drake, who discovers Batman and Nightwing's identities and just shows up and is like, hey, pick me. I'm good at this. You need a Robin. 
you need a Robin or you're going to just mope all the time and ruin your life. And Batman's like, you know what? I don't believe you, but you're right, and I'm going to take you on. And so that's I like the agency of Tim Drake in making himself the uh, sidekick as opposed to being chosen as the sidekick, which was sort of the norm until that point. All right, uh, we've covered we've covered basically everything. I think we had uh, set out to. There's nothing left to say about uh, sidekicks. We've literally covered every topic possible, so no one will have any more comments saying, "Oh, you forgot to talk about this." Is there anything else we got to say? Okay, okay. that's you. You have you have nothing left to say. You, I'm, I don't know. I'm speechless. speechless. Dang. If I had a sidekick, maybe I could say something. I don't want to be a sidekick. I think at this point in my life, I want to be the hero, and I want some kid to look up to me. I don't want to look up to somebody else anymore. I want to be the fist that punches, and not the kid who looks at the fist and says, yes. Noted. Noted. <laughs> okay, good. Modern modern sidekicks are like executive assistants, taking notes, carrying clipboards, doing dishes, getting dry, picking up dry cleaning. I, I don't really want to be a sidekick, not not today. Um, okay, guys. Well, I guess that's it. Thanks very much for joining me, and I'm just going to end the episode right here. <laughs>